Welcome to another SATS revision video. I get questions from parents all the time asking me what sort of things they can do with their child at home to help them with the SATS. These 10 minute SATS buster questions from CGP are really good and I highly recommend them. They obviously only take 10 minutes but they cover a wide range of things that your child needs for the SATS tests. The link to these books are going to be in the description, so just click on that and you can have a look and buy them for yourself. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I can certainly recommend them and I've used them for years now. A lot of children I've worked with have said that they really enjoy them too, so that's obviously a bonus. Okay, so let's look at how to answer these questions. What I would recommend that you do is you go away and do the test, give yourself the 10 minutes, don't go above that. Uh, once you've finished and you've checked it, come back to the video and you can have a look to see how I do it and see if there's anything that you could be improving on. Okay, so the first question says, round 378,746 to the nearest 100. Uh, so what we need to do when we're rounding to the nearest 100, we need to look at the 100s column, which is this 7 here. And we also need to look across to the 10s column here. And if the 10s column is 5 or above, then we need to round up. That 100 here needs to go up. If it's less than 5, uh, then we need to go down. So in this case, it is less than 5. So it would be 378,000 and 700. Okay, similarly with to the nearest 1,000, we look at the 1,000s column, and then we always look to the column on the right. That's the 100s column in this case. And we ask ourselves the same question. Is it 5 or above? If it is, we move it up. If it's less than 5, we knock it down. So having a look here, it's obviously more than 5 because it's 7. So our answer is 379,000. Number two is a bod mass question. So in a normal equation, we would have a multiplication and a subtraction. We would need to do the multiplication first because if we follow our bod mass rule, the M comes before the S. So in this case, we'll do 6 times 5 first and remember that. So obviously 6 times 5 is 30. I'm just going to make a note. Something minus 30, which is what this is, equates to, equals 10. So we can do the inverse. 10 plus 30 is 40. And just run that back, make sure it makes sense. 40 minus 30 equals 10. Yep, that must be the right answer. Okay, number three is the area of a triangle. And for this, you need to know the formula. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So we have the base, they provided that with us, millimetres, 11 millimetres, and then the height of 8. So we do that first, 11 times 8, that's 88. And then we divide that by 2, so 88 divided by 2 is 44 millimetres squared. Number 4, circle the values which are equivalent to 3 quarters. Um, in this case, it would be 9 twelfths. And the reason I know that is if I was to multiply both the top and the bottom by 3, I would have 9 on the top and 12 on the bottom, so I know that that is 1. 0.4 is the same as 4 tenths, so I know that's not correct, and 1 half is obviously not the same as 3 quarters. What you should know is that this is a decimal equivalent to 3 quarters. You should just know that 0.75 is the same as 3 quarters. It's very important you know that. And 4 fifths, um, I know again, is not the same as 3 quarters, so it's these two here. Number five, two pots of jam weigh 120 grams in total. How much will five pots of jam weigh? If you get a question like this, what I recommend you do is try and work out how much one of the things weigh or one of the things are worth. So in this case, we've got two pots of jam. So what we need to do is divide our total weight by two. Uh, so if I say two pots of jams, two jams equals 120, then one jam must be half of that, which is 60. Now, if I want to work out how many five pots will be, all I need to do is multiply at my one jam by five. So 60 times five is 300. To make sure we've got the same units, yep, they're both in grams. We don't need to do anything. Our answer is 300 grams. Number six, write down the rule for this number sequence. Well, if you look closely, 2.5 to 5 to 7.5, it's going up by 2.5 every time. So what you need to put in here is plus... 2.5 that's the rule that we're doing we're adding 2.5 each time for the next part of the question it says write down the next three terms and all that means is if we were to keep going what would the next numbers be so 10 add 2.5 is 12.5 and you'll start to see a pattern now 12.5 add 2.5 is 15 so 
process of elimination, the next one I would say is going to be 17.5. Okay, last two questions now. At a hockey match, there are 480 people. 45% of people at the hockey match are wearing T-shirts. How many people are not wearing T-shirts? I think it's really important that if you see a bit of information that's relevant to you, give it a, a thorough underlining so you don't get the wrong, uh, wrong end of the stick. Okay, so first of all, we need to work out how many people are wearing T-shirts. Well, if there's 480 altogether, then we need to work out what 45% of 480 is. The best thing to do in this case is, to, first of all, to work out 10%. So 10% of 480, you just need to divide that by 10. 10% equals 48. If I'm going to find 5% then, that's going to be half of this. 5% equals 24. And now we can add multiples of 10 and 5 to make 45%. First we're going to find 40%, so we'll do 4 lots of that. 48 times 4 equals 192. 192 add 24 is 216. So we've got 40%, 192, we've added a 5% to make 45%, and that is 216. Now that's not the answer, that's how many people are wearing t-shirts, okay? So what we need to do is work out how many are not. So if 216 are wearing t-shirts, then everybody else isn't. So in this case, we need to do the total number of people, 480, subtract those who are wearing t-shirts, and that'll give us our answer for how many people are not wearing t-shirts. So our answer is 264. Make sure when you do questions like this that you show you're working like that, even if you get the answer wrong. If you've done the correct sort of calculation, as I've done there, they may still give you that, that mark there, so you're not missing out on all the marks. Okay, last question. Number eight. Pupils in Rosa's class record their favourite type of fish. She puts the result in a pie chart. There are 40 pupils in Rosa's class. How many people said salmon was their favourite? Right, first of all, we need to work out how much each chunk of this pie chart is worth. And if we look carefully, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are ten individual chunks to make this uh, this entire pie chart. So if there's forty in total, all the chunks are going to be equal. So each chunk is going to be worth four because that's forty divided by ten. So having a look here, then we know that four people liked cod. If we count up in fours, it's 4, 8, 12, 16 people like haddock, 4, 8 people like tuna, 4, 8, 12 people like salmon. So how many people said salmon was their favourite? 4, 8, 12, the answer is 12. I hope you found that video useful. I'm going to keep doing more videos like this to help support you or your child with sats. If you did find the video useful, I would really appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to my channel because that really helps me out. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next video.